All right. Thanks so much for joining us on the 35th edition of Lunch Out Loud Ottawa. My name is Nick Bachuski. I'm Andrew Miller. And of course, Lunch Out Loud Ottawa is the podcast that brings you the people, places, events, and music that makes Ottawa the incredible city that it is. So before we speak with Mr. Sean Dawson, why don't we check out some Jim Bryson. Hi, this is Jim Bryson. I will be headlining the Arboretum Fest on Friday night. I suggest you possibly come out. I'm also going on tour with Jan Grant starting on September 5th in Halifax, and you can visit me at jimbryson.org. And you're about to hear the songs Decidedly, Constellation, and Freeways in the Front Yard on Lunch Out Loud, Ottawa. So that song was called Decidedly from Jim Bryson off the Falcon Lake incident, which came out in uh, 2010 that he recorded with the Weaker Thens, of course, on Falcon Lake. He was also the headliner at Westfest recently, so an excellent Ottawa artist. And of course, Arboretum Festival in mid-August, and we'll have Rolf Klausener, the uh, the head starter of founder of the festival, on in August. So that's going to be excellent. Wow, that's huge! He recorded with the Weaker Thens. Yeah. Wow, they're pretty big. I know they came, uh, some of their band members used to be in Propagandy, which really? is an old punk band. I did not know a that. A lot of people didn't know that they were any relation whatsoever. Yeah, excellent. You know. All right, so we're here with Sean Dawson. He's the founder of Dream Mount- the Dream Mountains Foundation, and uh, he's been in the restaurant indus- industry for about 30 years, and right now he's the creator and owner of Fat Boy Southern Smokehouse at 34 Murray Street. We're in uh, downtown in the market where we are at right now. It's a beautiful location. It is. Uh, Inside and out. I love it in here. Excellent patio, so definitely make it down here. But one of the main things that we're we're very interested in is that he is the eighth person in the entire planet, in the entire history of the world, that has uh, climbed the seven highest peaks in the seven continents in two years. So an incredible feat to Mm -hmm. climb one of them let alone all seven, let alone in two years. It's just absolutely incredible. Yeah. Well, hi, guys. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. How's that intro for you? Yeah, well, it's, uh, <laughs> uh, well I really appreciate you inviting, them, inviting me to your show and uh, getting a chance to say uh, hi to uh, all the fine folks here in Ottawa. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it was quite, a, uh, quite an interesting couple of years while I was traveling the world, for, for sure. sure. Yeah, well, so let's, uh, let's step it back a bit. Uh, what brought you to Ottawa originally? How long have you been here, et cetera, et cetera? Well, I'm a, I'm a proud Brockvillian, born in Brockville on the Thousand Islands. Do they call it Brock Vegas there, like we do? Yeah, here? we yeah. call it Brock Vegas as well. All right. Yeah, <laughs> and um, and then uh, from from there, uh, it's where I started in the uh, bar restaurant industry. And uh, at one point in time, as a matter of fact, I was in Toronto for a number of years uh, managing uh, Copa, uh, which was at that point in time the largest nightclub in Canada. Oh well. Wow. Yeah, we had like Tina Turner, In Excess, The Cult, Steppenwolf, Nazareth, all play live there. You know, so it was wow. pretty uh, pretty cool uh, things to experience as a young guy in the business. Where, where was that located in Toronto? Uh, Yorkville. Um, it's a high rise now, but it was in Yorkville, uh, two blocks north of Young and Bloor. So. I'm guessing that was uh, sometime in the 80s, late yeah. 80s? Yeah, late 80s, exactly. So, yeah, hence my 30 years in the business. Yeah. <laughs> Almost 30 years. So... Um, and then, uh, and then uh, I ended up being involved with a, a roadhouse chain called uh, O'Toole's, which uh, Ottawa affectionately knew because we had six locations here in Ottawa that I came to work with and be a district manager with. Um, and then just uh, loved Ottawa and stayed and uh, stayed in the business and eventually got involved with a number of different, uh, you know, um, 
sort of locations that became famous in the city. Uh, most notably was uh, Grace and Mallings yeah. that uh, we had for 14 years and just recently uh, closed and uh, sold and then reopened in our new concept. So yeah, that's awesome. oh, that's great. Yeah. What uh, what kept you in Ottawa as opposed to going back to Toronto, say, with the tools when when you're done with that venture? Well, you know, the thing is, coming from a small town, uh, it, it gets in your blood and you love it. Uh, but in my industry, it's very difficult to, you know, say, thrive for what I do and the creativity that I have in, in my industry. Um, but at the same point in time, Ottawa gave a sense of a small town uh, comfort, uh, but with, you know, an international city. So it's just, it's just too beautiful of a city with too much going on. But at the same point in time, it's got that, you know, that close Canadian comfort and charm that I just didn't, I called it home and never even considered looking back on it. That's so. amazing. And you're not far from Brockville, obviously. Oh, yeah. You I mean, I came from there right now. And yeah, I still have country. a home down there on the river and, uh, and I try to go back and forth a little bit. But I mean, you know, Ottawa's always going to be my home now. So, and I love it. Fantastic. What if, what if, when you're not training for climbing uh, the peaks that we're going to get into later with the, the, the Dream Mountains Foundation, what are some other activities that you enjoy to do in, in and around Ottawa? Um, well, I'm obviously with my training, I'm an, you know, uh, an avid athlete, so I enjoy anything. Uh, I mean, the fact that we were, we're so close to the Gatineau Hills, it's always part of my training. Um, spending time with my girl and uh, we go to the Gatineau's quite often. Um, Are you biking there, climbing? Uh, uh, hiking, really, for the most part. What's um, your favorite trail? We use Wolf Trail the most, most consistently. Um, you know, we'll try to, a lot of times we'll try to actually do two loops of it, which is about 16K in total. Wow. Yeah, so, and she really loves, she does trail running. She competes in trail running, so she really loves uh, using the Gatineau's as well. Um, and then, you know, for the most part, for me, because I, I'm so inundated with activity for sports that then the rest of the time it's it's just enjoying, you know, the festivals, enjoying uh, just the culture of the city. I mean, there's just no excuse in the city for not having something to do. I mean, that's oh, just sure. that's just people not being creative in what they want because the name something that you want to do and and then tell me you can't find it in Ottawa. Yeah, so. exactly. I think something that, like you mentioned, you asked the name of the trail. I think a lot of people... If you've never went hiking in the Gatineau Hills, you don't really know what it's all about. But there's trail maps, and there's a series of trails, and they're all pretty clearly identified. And I remember the first time I went, I was astounded. I thought, you just kind of go up there and start walking through the bush, you know, yeah. and off you go and you're hiking now. But, uh, you know, it's a lot more organized than that. And, you Very know, easy to negotiate. Yeah, there's to easy trails, there's so. intermediate, you know, there's more advanced trails and whatnot. It's, uh, it's a great time, so... Did, did you get to any of the Blues Fest on the over the past couple? Yeah, weeks? I'm a I'm a big country fan and uh, absolutely Brown. love Zach Brown. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we we saw him down in Syracuse as well. Uh, you know, didn't, to be honest with you, didn't think the opportunity for Zach Brown to even come to Canada was going to be there. So there's just another example of when people say, "Well, things don't happen." Are you kidding me? I yeah. mean, Zach yeah. Brown. Are you, I mean, there's sold out shows in the Southern States. So to get them up here in Canada and kudos to the to the folks at the blues festival you know like they they just put on a great show mm -hmm. yeah. you know it's, it's a great festival and they put on a great show so and i i knew so many people that i came across when i was there not one person was disappointed they were it it fully uh, exceeded people's expectations yeah. so yeah, even the rainy days uh, you know nobody oh, yeah. seemed bummed out at all no nope. yeah, no uh, we had a great time and we did a review show on monday oh. with uh, four reviewers from the ottawa sun ottawa showbox and ellie leverge's uh reviews around the city nice and it was a really good uh, episode to just get other people's reviews see what we can do uh going forward and uh what we like this year so other than getting fat boys uh as one of the yeah. food vendors i don't I think there's say, anything else they could do better <laughs> do, you, do you see that happening in the future possibly uh well we uh, we attempted this year um we, we really feel that the the food at fat boys is is perfectly designed uh, you know Absolutely even more so than some of the other ones that we saw there um, but we thought that the food would be just perfect for the whole atmosphere. And um, but I think they were really gracious with us. It was just a matter of you know they've got a lot of people come back every year, mm -hmm. so you, you just sort of have to stay in the queue and wait for that spot to open. Wonderful. And maybe all your fans will write into them and tell them they need Fat Boys there. <laughs> there you go. So we'll look into that for uh, possibly next year in the coming years. New campaign. Uh, <laughs> um, but are the restaurants and uh, stuff. Obviously, you've owned uh, and operated a couple of different spots in Ottawa. 
Um, you, you clearly like it. Um, what uh, other spots do you like to go? You know. Uh, well, you mentioned, uh, for an example, uh, Westfest. I mean, uh, Westboro is certainly one of my favorite parts of town. And, uh, I mean, and it's starting to really, I mean, over the last five, six years, anybody that's been in that area has definitely seen changes, especially in the restaurant market. They've really mm-hmm. introduced some new restaurants, um, you know, and, and, and now they're starting in even to uh, bring the level of the restaurants to more fine dining as well so that you've got a really nice diverse crowd in Westboro to choose from for restaurants so Savoy was just the most recently opened yeah. restaurant there and uh, the operators uh, that own that restaurant are great operators and they have uh, some you know three or four other uh, well proven concepts that they've done so you know they're mm-hmm. going to bring and they're locally owned and operated which is nice as well you know that's, there's no chains uh, in there so it's nice sorry to interrupt that uh, Savoy that's the one uh, where um, that's right Newport Pub used to that's be that's right exactly yep. that it's, it's right on the corner of uh, Churchill and uh, yeah and, and the same Lawrence operators and, and they own Metropolitan Empire Grill that's the right, Grand that's right. you know so they're they're good guys and again it's always nice to know that it's it locally owned and operated mm-hmm. so a lot of people are surprised at Fat Boys I mean if you've been in you know you, you kind of a lot of people are very surprised to realize that it's a locally owned and operated because they just feel right away that it must be a chain concept because it's so, you well, know, right on the money. It's funny you say that. I was just in Lake George, uh, New York, and there was a big smokehouse there. And the first night I was there, I went in just for a drink or two. And, I, you know, it's that smell that gets you first off. Any smokehouse you go into, it's just, mm-hmm. it just smells great. Eh? And, uh, you know, I thought of that too. I said, well, you know, I wonder if this is a chain as well, which it's probably not. It's probably just local as well, but yeah. great idea either way. Yeah. yeah. What made you uh, think of doing Fat Boys uh, Southern Steak at the Smokehouse here in Ottawa in this location? This is a prime location. Yeah. Well, well, it, it is prime in the fact it's in the Byward Market, but we are we're just that one block on Murray off of Clarence. But anybody with the history of knowing the restaurants down here, you know, 20 years ago, well, a little over 20 years ago, Heart and Crown opened up on the corner of Clarence and mm-hmm. Merle. And people thought they were crazy to go there yeah. because it was just way off the beaten path. Because York Street back in those days was the was the, where everything happened. Now everything happens on Clarence, so we're just a little ahead of the game in the fact that we're on Murray, and we think that you know within the next couple of years we'll build our clientele and our following. And the nice thing about us too is we're not jammed in between a whole bunch of other restaurants. So people yeah. walk by and they just stop and look and they smell they they smell the the ribs and. They see our big patio, and the, usually a lot of times the Harleys are out front. People like to stop and look at the bikes, and it's just it just gives a whole new ambiance to the to down here in the Bywood Market. Yeah. Just another flavor, you know, for people to enjoy. It was okay. named after your uh, motorcycle. Yeah. I was gonna say it has to be. Uh, Fat Boy's got to be my favorite Harley ever made. And, yeah, oh, uh, it's a. I wanted it, to know if that was something, and I see over here we got a an MC patch over there. With yeah, the, we uh, have our own, custom, uh, our own custom, our uh, own custom motorcycle patch uh, as part of our branding. Do you have a couple of cuts that uh, you provide for uh, some of the top owners, maybe? Or? Well, we all have. Well, we have uh, we have a whole line of clothing actually that we sell here. We have uh, a whole bunch of different hats and T-shirts, and some of them have our corporate logo on them. Some of them have our uh, our whole motorcycle theme logo on them so you know the That's idea really is as cool. we do build and uh, expand our brand uh, you'll be able to wear a, a patch from whichever location you enjoy or you can you know save them up and you know be part of the whole club kind of that's idea cool. so. that's a really good idea yeah. excellent so that's looking for the future you're looking to, oh, to move across across canada across uh, no, I mean, we just go piece by piece we, we, we like to broaden ourselves we want to open up uh, more smaller satellite takeout style versions throughout the city um, so that people in the suburbs can really enjoy you know, fat boys without having to make the, the long haul sometimes down yeah. to the Bywood Market. And then, um, and then you know, once we've, we really know what we're doing and we, like, in the fact that we can expand the concept and we can stay consistent, then our plan is to maybe, you know, it was broaden out, Kempfo, Brockville, Kingston, you know, Cornwall, that kind of idea yeah. first. And then just see where we go. I mean, we're, we're in no hurry. We, we want to make sure what we do, we do it right. So. Absolutely, and uh, you you provide almost every day. You have something, some kind of special, or some kind of deal, which is excellent here. I, I've heard a lot about the Sunday brunch with the. Uh, yeah, that's a definitely one that we're proud of. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a unique concept. It actually, it was inspired by the House of Blues. Um, the was, chain it was yeah the the Dan Aykroyd's chain, you know, that mm-hmm. really inspired us for this one, but. So every Sunday, we have an all-you-can-eat full buffet. I mean, it's got everything on it. Uh, Southern delicacies, but we have also, like, um, you know, fried chicken and waffles. You know, we have <laughs> we have our ribs. We have smoked mac and cheese. You know, double-smoked bacon. I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of variety on the, on the buffet. 
but what makes it interesting is that while you're enjoying all you can eat buffet, we have the live live gospel band. And it's not like religious in perspective. It's just high energy, fun, listening, you know, Sunday morning. You know, and we started, we have a two shows, 11 o'clock and 1. And uh, 11 o'clock, you can kick it right off with a $5 Caesar if you want, you know, to go with your, to go with the That's whole buffet. That's Sundays usually go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, but it's very family friendly, which is another unique thing. And we've got children that will get up and just dance in front of the band. And, uh, and awesome. everybody has a good time with it. Yeah. That's a lot of fun. What time? Are you only fun. open at 11 on Sunday, though? Yeah the, yeah. the way it works for the Sunday gospel is only the uh, 11 and 1 o'clock shows. Okay. And then regular business after that. So. Cool. Yeah, and of course, all you can eat ribs on. Uh, yeah, Monday, all you so. can eat on Monday. Yeah. yeah, that's our big one. Yeah. So, and we that's connect a really that good with price too, eighteen ninety nine. Yeah, eighteen ninety nine, and it is truly no strings attached. I mean, we start you right off with half a pound of ribs, yeah. some of our cornbread, some coleslaw, some beans, and then we just bring you a quarter pound of ribs each time you need it. So, <laughs> it's all part of it. That's and cool. then we have a really great promotion connected with the NFL on this one that we uh, and Budweiser, so that if you you know you choose your favorite team. And we're going to uh, send you to the season opener uh, at the end of the summer. Um, so every Monday you're in, you just qualify, and then it will send you to your favorite team uh, season opener game. Oh, wow. So That's yep. really cool. Yeah, so there will be no Kansas City no, for you. No, no not so no, much, much, unfortunately. Yeah, and I'm not looking to go Detroit. I think I'm going to is take Kansas, my... Is Kansas your favorite team? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've seen I've seen Kansas play live in Kansas when I was down there for oh, really? some research. Yeah, it was awesome. I hear oh, Arrowhead right. Stadium is quite, uh, quite ridiculous in terms uh, of noise and whatnot there. One of our high tops... Uh, yeah. in the restaurant is actually uh, each we have four high tops in the restaurant uh, bar like you know bar stool style big tables for groups yeah. and they're each named after uh, a different state and one of them is named after Kansas well hey, specifically hey. after Kansas City really <laughs> oh cool <laughs> alright so why don't we take a quick break and listen to some more Jim Bryson uh, and then we'll be back and then we'll talk all things uh, Dream Mountains Foundation and uh, you know climbing Mount Everest because that's so interesting and yeah, uh, sure. not many people in Ottawa can say they've done that so we'll listen to Constellation from Jim Bryson we'll be right back with Sean Dawson So once again, that was Constellation by Jim Bryson with the Weaker Thens there from the, the Falcon Lake Incident album that you can download on iTunes and visit his website as well or at Jim Bryson on Twitter. So we're here with Sean Dawson. He is the founder of Dream Mountains Foundation and we would like to learn a lot more about that and the incredible things you're doing with that and the hundreds of thousands of dollars you've raised for seven very important charities. So I guess when it started, how you came about... Uh, with the idea? Well, a lot of people ask me what even sparked the whole thing, and um, I started getting involved with uh, charity work. I, uh, I I got involved with Habitat for Humanity, and I did three international uh, uh, builds in Ghana, El Salvador, and um, um, uh, China, El Salvador, and Ghana all, all together. And um, so I got to start a chance to do some charity work, see around the world, and then I came across a climb for Care Canada for Kilimanjaro. And uh, after that climb is when I learned about the Seven Summits, which is uh, the, the challenge of climbing the highest mountain on every continent on Earth, and which of course will include Everest. And Kilimanjaro, although it's very difficult, is actually by far the easiest of the seven summits oh, really? and I thought it was actually quite difficult at the time and I thought well that's pretty kind of crazy this is not even achievable like but it was interesting and as time went on I got introduced to um, the first Canadian woman to ever do it Megan major Megan McGrath and we became good friends and she became my mentor in climbing 
and I just made the decision I was going to slowly attempt it and if I was doing okay with it I would just keep going and until I couldn't do it anymore um, and but then I decided because the you know with especially with Mount Everest being one in 20 people uh, die on the mountain the odds of me coming back on all these mountains you know it's very likely something could go wrong yeah so um, I wanted to make it greater than myself and uh, I talked with some you know very close friends and we talked about it and uh, I decided to form uh, the Dream Mountains Foundation and connected seven charities that were very close to my heart that uh, you know in relation to the seven summits yeah. and I thought well at least my goal was to raise a, a dollar per foot that I climbed and which turned out to be $143,000, 143,000 feet that wow. I ended up climbing uh, over the two years which all got allocated to the seven charities and 100% uh, of all money that was raised goes to the charities. All we do is there's no admin fees involved with, with Dream Mountains. It's simply a funneling. We simply bring attention and awareness to the charities and yeah. um, and do all the donations right directly to them on our just we just bring attention to it. So wow, that's great. When when you're climbing Everest or climbing the mountains, did you use that as kind of motivation to get you through when you when you're ultimately faced with the tough task? You're like, I, I should, you know, maybe I should just turn back or whatever. And you're like, no, I'm going to continue on. You know, I've I've made this pledge to these people. These po people have put their trust in me. They donated the money. I'm doing this for a great cause. Just gives you that added kind of bonus. Uh, it's certainly added push. it's certainly part. Um, it's certainly part of your motivation. Um, you really do get overwhelmed though with a, uh, a self survival techniques because you know you really have to stay focused on the ball, and um, you know there's different strengths that you're going to pull from in order to like for an example, Everest takes two and a half months to climb. So wow. there's a lot of times where you're just digging deep and uh, trying to decide why you're there and what you're doing it for. And the charitable aspect certainly becomes part of that, you know, and thinking about all the people that have been, are rooting for you back home. And, uh, you know, and, and you really don't want to disappoint, you know, but at the same point in time, you really are just doing your best to stay focused on, on what you got to do, you know, really minute by minute, minute up there. So I think that's astounding. Two and a half months to climb. What was the total? I mean, you did everything in two, two years. Yeah, under two years. That doesn't sound like there's a lot of uh, break time in there. There's not much break time and there's no uh, room for error, um, which is why it turned out to be, you know, in that under 10 people in history kind of record book thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, and the other thing is these mountains, uh, a number of the mountains only have certain uh, opportunities of time. Oh, so okay. For an example, Antarctica, you can only be, you can only climb in Antarctica in, Jan in uh, December and January because after that it goes black and dark and it's yeah. just not functionable for a human being to be down there, you know. So, yeah. and you can't get on the, you can't get on the ice to begin with. Uh, you just can't fly over at that point in time. So. Right. So, you know, in Everest, uh, the opportunity for Everest is uh, in the month of uh, May. You know, that's the only time generally that uh, that the jet stream is going to drop, is going to be raised up over the uh, summit so that a human being can get in and underneath and get to the top. So, so there's a lot of restrictions, you know. And, I mean, for an example, Papua New Guinea for Oceania, uh, I had to reroute my timing on that because of a political uprising, oh, you wow. know, and, which changed... You know, I was going to finish off with Kilimanjaro for the second time for the record book, and I had to reroute my timing and uh, go to, you know, uh, go to Papua New Guinea uh, afterwards instead. So, so there's all kinds of little logistical problems that come up, but you know, it's challenging, which is all part of it. Wow. Wait, what did you think of Papua New Guinea when you're hiking through, hiking through the jungles towards, towards even the base? Of it was the, brutal. The it was brutal. It was certainly one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. What um, kind of animals are? Well, I was going to uh, say there's a, there's snakes. a whole different level of danger there, right? Because you got all sorts of spiders yeah. and snakes and whatnot to worry about. I'm As a matter of fact, spiders. We came. So you're you're in you're in the jungle, and if anybody's ever been in the jungle, the rainforest. I mean, you're up to your knees in mud. Twenty four. I mean, literally the whole time you're there. And wow. uh, the irony about it is, you also you know we were dealing with about twenty one hours a day of rain. You know, you'd be through the rain, you'd get to camp and you'd be, you know, sub a tent and be in the rain and just constant, constant rain mm -hmm. with humidity. And especially with the 
you know, the airing of this show right now, you know that yeah. uh, what the humidity is like. So imagine dealing with it where you can't get out of it and you're being soaked on all the time. Yeah. No comforts, no going No, into, absolutely not, no, no comforts at all. Yeah. <laughs> no, nothing at all. So we come out of this one clearing, for an example, and uh, it was like a scene from, uh, you know, The Hobbit. Like, it was just crazy. It was the, the bushes, the trees were all full of cobwebs. And, like, our local guides... We literally went up to a, to one of the bushes and just reached in and grabbed a spider and ate the spider as a delicacy. And, I, and, and then, of course, offered it to me. And I'm like, <laughs> thanks, but uh, I'm okay with this, you know. <laughs> so, uh, but the challenge is most mountains, uh, the approach is very difficult because you're trying to acclimatize. It takes a lot longer. And then when you're done, you usually, you know, a third of the time to get back home. In this case, it's different because you had to go a week through the jungle to get to the base of the mountain, climb the mountain, and then when you're done climbing, you had another week out of the jungle. It was a straight on, so there was just wow. no way around, you know, no nice easy reward at the end for, uh, it, was, it was still another hard week to get back out. So, so what, sort of, uh, what sort of training process do you have to go through to climb these mountains? I know I, I, we talked about it earlier before the show, I had some friends that, that you actually helped train a little bit. Um, you know, some people just think, oh, I think I'm going to go climb a mountain and, you know, okay, I'm going to go climb Everest. And like you said, it's, it's, it's not for everybody. And so what sort yeah. of training? Yeah, where would you go in Ottawa to do, to do that if you're going to start? Well, the first thing, of course, depending on the level of the mountain, like for an example, Kilimanjaro is, uh, is a rewarding and beautiful mountain, um, but it is really, for the most extent purpose, it's a, it's a extreme difficult hike. Okay. So um, um, there's no technical skills necessary. So, for technical skills, I mean, for example, I went to Bolivia and did my training down there and climbed, you know, peaks as high as 21,000 feet, uh, which is higher than anything in Canada. So, mm -hmm. so that's where I did uh, my mountaineering training. And then, of course, you learn and techniques and keep growing as you're climbing. But for the overall conditioning, um, because we are at sea level, what I, what I do... Um, and what I believe in is I do stair training is my primary okay. um, method of training. So I'll, I also do core and plyometric training, which is really important. But the most important thing that I do is uh, do the stairs. So I work at the out at the Minto Suites Hotel. And it's 33 floors. It's 450 stairs. And I'll do anywhere from uh, 10 to 20 sets. So anywhere wow. from you know four to 9,000 uh, stairs per workout. How do people look at you when you're uh, going? When people that are staying there see you <laughs> so, bolting yeah. up and down the stairs. Yeah, a security guard. Or yeah, they, they, yeah. They don't. Uh, well, the one nice thing about it is you don't see anybody generally in the stairs. Well, I know those thing. stairs probably better than anybody in that building does. So uh, <laughs> every little nook and cranny of those stairs, I know now, uh, inside and out. Wow. What about like breathing techniques? Uh, you know, the air is obviously a little bit thinner. Is that that's pretty? Well, that's where that's where stair training comes in handy oh, okay. because um, you know I'll. I will when I do the stair training. It's not just simple as just going up and down the stairs. I'll I'll vary the pace. I'll do double stepping, um, which will work. I'll do sprinting. I'll do walking, and I'll work different muscle groups. Um, but also, as you're, why you need the the height and the con consistent height is to force your breathing and get yourself into a pattern. Okay. It's also you know obviously monotonous, but so is climbing and so is hiking. Yeah. So the idea is, as you're being in the altitude, you have to be able to concentrate. Uh, consistently on your breathing and anybody that's trained with me and gone on hikes uh, or Kilimanjaro or Everest Base Camp or Machu Picchu any of those charity climbs that I lead um, training with the breathing is always one of the first things we work with them and it's always the thing that they're always grateful later going wow I didn't realize this was going to make such a difference and it usually makes or break their trip for them hmm. well, wonderful so with the Dream Mountains Foundation what you're, you initially wanted to do three mountains when you started was it three three trips? No, no, no. Initially, uh, initially, I was just going to do one by one, and as I did them, if I was successful, I would basically earn my right to go on to the next one. No, I know. I meant now with the five thousand. Yeah. So after, yeah. yeah. So after I finished the the seven summits, I decided that for the sake of the foundation and to continue the the work, um, I decided to commit to climbing uh, to leading um, charity climbs. So the first year, I took a team to Kilimanjaro. Uh, in 11 and in 12 I took a team to Everest Space Camp and then uh, this year I took two teams to Machu Picchu in Peru and I'll go again next year we start it all over again and we go back to Kilimanjaro so each member of my team 
uh, in order to be on the dream team, they pay their own expenses as well as they commit to raising $5,000 for one of the seven uh, charities. And to date, those three, uh, over the last three years, along with the original Seven Summit, um, we're up over half a million dollars that uh, Dream Mountains has raised. Phenomenal. Wow, that's great. Phenomenal. How can one uh, go about getting to be a part of this Dream Team? Besides, I mean, is there a, you have a website that... Yeah, they can go to or? dreammountains.com. Okay. And if they go to dreammountains.com, uh, they can learn, they can go back and look at some of the, the previous climbs and learn all about them and see if, it's, if it works for them. And then they can contact me. They can actually contact me at Sean, S-H-A-W-N, at fatboys.ca. Okay. And then I can uh, give them information for next year. We'll be going at the end of March to Kilimanjaro. Come in to Fat Boys for a meal, too. Yeah, and you can talk definitely. To Come in any Monday night. I'll be on the bar, and you can actually talk to me in person. Oh, nice. You still bartend as well? Yeah, I That's love great. it. I like being be, part of it. It's got to be hard to stop, eh? Oh, yeah. Dealing I just, with people I love all the time. I just, I just love dealing with the people. I mean, it's relaxing for me, and I get a chance to... I get a chance to firsthand see uh, if people are enjoying their barbecue and if they're enjoying the atmosphere and if and if there's any issues, I want to be here to, to make sure they're taken care of. Absolutely. Do you think that's a, that's a, a benefit for you? That I mean, you see a lot of owners of big restaurants and they kind of sit in the sidelines. After a while, do you think it benefits you? You know, seeing it firsthand how the restaurant operates. Uh, yeah, well, for sure. I mean, and I see it both ways. I understand. Uh, you know, you can't always be in the business, and especially a lot of restaurateurs, entrepreneurs, and have other businesses on the go or other locations. But for me, you know, I, I truly believe that people work hard for their money, yeah. and I truly believe that uh, they deserve to to get what they pay for. And you know, I mean, it's tough to find the time and money and, and everything to bring the family down and go out for dinner and it's a special uh, treat or whatever it is. And I want to make sure that they've got their money's worth. If, you know, and that they, they go home and that they go, yeah, it was great. It was a great meal. It was a great atmosphere. We loved the place and. And it was worth it. And that's what it should be when you go out for dinner, whether it's a fancy yeah. restaurant or something casual like Fat Boys. So. Cool. I love it. Um, so I, I just one more question that I had to follow up with. When they do pay to, or they do commit to the Dream Team, they, they've paid their own way, they, uh, they've gotten the $5,000 for the charity, then do they get the privilege of tra training with you? You take them on the, yeah. is it a two, like how, how long do they train with you? So what they'll end up doing is training uh, all personally, once they've signed up for the team, um, then I will personally, you know, uh, tutor every person on the team. We will, once the process starts, we start going to the Gatnos uh, once every two weeks. Uh, as we get closer, we'll go every Sunday and we'll train. Uh, they can train with me uh, twice a week doing stair training. And then we have, uh, we also do um, uh, seminars on what to bring, um, how to prep themselves for their uh, clothing and for their layering. And then on these hikes and on these stair training, uh, you know, I tell them stories and I, and I talk about different things. And from that, they start to learn and be prepared for what they're going to be uh, having to deal with when they get there. And the nice thing about it is, you know, anybody can do these things from anywhere in the world. But the difference is you go, you, you join a team, you, you know, you just go. It isn't for charity. You don't gain from doing it for a better, greater reason than yourself. Mm -hmm. Not to mention, you come back and you've got you know 20 people that you just became best of friends with and you've shared the experience with. Mm -hmm. And now, and you're also part of you know in this case to be the fourth generation of, of uh, Dream Team members that you can be part of. So that's great. As a matter of fact, we uh, it's not 100% confirmed, but. From what I understand, uh, it's just a matter of getting a few things worked out. But uh, Leanne Lang from CTV Wonderful. is going to be uh, joining us on uh, Kilimanjaro as a kind of celebrity uh, climber. And oh, she's excited great. because it's... Leanne, you can't back out now. <laughs> <laughs> we know she listens to the show every week. Uh, yeah. uh, she's going to be a great I great just want to know, um, through all those climbs, did you lose many people? Like in the, in the seven climbs with the groups you were with? Every single one. Every single one. <laughs> here. That's why we keep doing this. We so want to first get of all, successful. just to clarify, lose. <laughs> Nobody died on any of these <laughs> okay. climbs. That's good. Uh, these are, these are uh, climbs that are within the capabilities of uh, average people that are uh, doing extraordinary things. And um, we've everybody, we have had, um, all extents purposes, we've had 100% success rate. That's great. And uh, we've had a couple people that, that uh, in Kilimanjaro, there's two points. There's uh, Stella Point, which is just below the summit, which is still recognizable as a summit. And we had two people that made it to there, and everybody else made it to the top. 
Um, but that was still after, you know, nine days of climbing. So, yeah, that's, that's yeah. so we take our time. We do it right. Uh, everybody's b- very well trained and ready to go by the time they get there. There's no surprises for anybody. And in most cases, other people around there coming from around the world are so surprised how, how organized and uh, in sync the Dream Teams are. So. Wow, you're doing oh, some great work. That's amazing. Those, yeah. those, those seven charities, we didn't go over them. Uh, I'll go over them now. Habitat for Humanity, Dreams Take Flight. Where, what's Dreams Take Flight? I've never oh, Dreams Take Flight is amazing. It's, uh, it's a charity. It's, it's designed for children that are uh, disabled, disadvantaged. Um, they come from different communities throughout Canada. Uh, Ottawa has its own chapter. And Air Canada is the partner. And they fly, uh, they fly these children for one day for a dream come true down to Disney World. Okay, I do oh, know. Wow. I yeah, do it's know amazing. That, yeah. Robin from my office does that. Oh, every really? Single year, yeah. That's great. Uh, school breakfast program. That's an excellent program. Ride for Dad. Yeah, Ride for Dad. Yeah. Prostate cancer, and yeah. that and that just ties right again with my life and with being a, a Harley rider and uh, and Fat Boys, of course. Absolutely. Colon Cancer Canada. Yeah, Colon Cancer Canada was very special to me because uh, uh, you know a lot of your listeners would have heard of Truffle Treasures before, and uh, Truffle Treasures owner was Lara Ferrari. Uh, you know, such an amazing woman, and she just recently uh, passed away in uh, Boxing Day last year from colon cancer, and Sorry. that's why we've introduced it to uh, to Dream Mountains. And she was a very avid. Uh, she was behind me all the time through my uh, doing the Seven Summits. Supporting and so she supported the the first couple of climbs as well for wow. Kilimanjaro and Everspace. Wow, very nice lady. We'll do it. And uh, Care, oh, like Care Canada. Them. That's where it kicked all off. Exactly. Wonderful. And SOS Children's Villages. Yeah, SOS. I mean, as Canadians, we should be very proud of. It. We have over 138 or- orphanages throughout uh, the world, and it's a Canadian base. As a matter of fact, the head office is right down here in the Byward Market. Okay. Mm-hmm. There you go. Let's circle that one off. So, well, thanks so much for letting us uh, meet with you. It's, oh, a, it's a privilege. Really, like, Appreciate uh, being uh, part of it, guys. Yeah, yeah, sure. Very interesting. I, and uh, you know what? I'm going to commit within the next three, four years to definitely go on this climb. Because I've been I wanting think to we do shit. That, there you go. You've Let's heard it. I want to do Machu Picchu. There we, we could do yes. live uh, live podcasts. Uh, hey, there you know, we go. Then, we can, we then, the, um, then all your listeners can actually hear you out of breath and understand firsthand. <laughs> oh, no, no. I'm gonna start I won't doing, get out of breath. I'm going to start doing, I'm gonna start doing <laughs> stairs today. So very quickly, we'll go through uh, some events going on this week. Uh, I got tonight, CHU 089.1 FM and Antique Skate Shop prevent, uh, presents Summer Jam Swap 2 from 7 p.m. to midnight at 9 Florence Street. So uh, nice. you're just swapping uh, playlists with each other. Everybody's getting together, listening to some music. So that'll be great. And then after you go to open air social at Barristers, it's on a nice night. Hopefully the rain finishes off then. Mm-hmm. Friday, I got hip-hop karaoke at Mob Mug Shots. I love going there for uh, the open air outside. Yeah. Even, if if you haven't hostel. been, I know. If, if nobody there, if you haven't been to Mug Shots, go. It Absolutely. is awesome. It is a great little spot. And a nice little nook in the yeah, city that you never thought existed. Yeah, it's, it's it's outdoors when it's so beautiful outside. You don't want to go in, inside. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Saturday, you got Dundado Park for some indie films from a few local filmmakers. Of course, the week after, they're going to be doing their regular films at that park, so that's a good time. It's Big Derby Weekend, Roller Derby event at City Hall from 12 to 6. And oh, then nice. there's some matches at the Pinecrest Recreation Center. Yeah. And, of course, Fat, Boy, Fat Boys does sponsor a couple of the teams as well. Yeah. And uh, if you've never watched any World Derby, it is a hell of a great time. You get some beers, sit off in it the back and watch cool, it. Sure. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, that's all, a good They event, all come eh? here afterwards. Yeah, it's Wonderful. Wild. Oh, nice. Uh, Grind is this Saturday. I know we uh, talked about it last week, but it's actually this Saturday at Ritual. You lied to me last time. I know. Uh, Lebanese Festival is going on, so if you want some incredible food, go there. Uh, they got a water melon eating uh, championship. I'd destroy that. Uh, <laughs> the Haitian Festival is at Petrie Island, so you're getting two like great international festivals amazing that are going culture. on. Yeah, amazing oh, culture sure. in this city. And of course, Totem's still going on. How did Totem, you like them? Oh my God. Uh, it was absolutely amazing. I would suggest uh, oh, if anyone Soleil. is the Cirque du oh. Soleil, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. I think it's only here for about another week and a week bit, bit, perhaps. Yeah. But uh, go go do yourself a favor. Take the family out. Take your girlfriend, whoever. It is awesome. You will very much enjoy it. Yeah. So next week, we have Top of the World. Yep. And music from Flight Distance. Oh, awesome. Anything else? No, I think that's about it. Join us Sunday for a gospel brunch. There, there you go. go. Gospel brunch and then one of the one of the festivals. What better day? Yeah. So uh, we'll leave you with one last song from Jim Bryson, Freeways in the Front Yard. Thank you so much. Yeah. And have a great week, everyone. Take care. Bye. It's 
It's been a long drive. There's no telling when we will get home. With all our divisions marking the way. We had a fine time. I know now why you need to get going. Much you can do out there on your own. Like watch the clouds collide and cover up the setting sun. Just like we did when we were quite young. City, just watching the freeways grow in our front yard. We had a good time, but I don't know why we need to be settling. The places we found out here in the world. Count the rings around our eyes after staring into the sun, just like we did when we were quite young. Let's watch the clouds collide and cover as the day gets done. Some days it feels like I never grew up, but stayed so. Made us into a movie with no ending. A pretty good start, a pretty good beginning. Faded long before it ever hit the bend. Long way from the end. Long way from the end. Long way from the end. Long way from the end.